In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to cut and sew a hoodie, also known as a sweater or a cardigan. I'll be sharing with you how I cut and sew this two-faced hoodie, like you can wear both the inner and the outer part of this hoodie. A hoodie is a fast-selling streetwear and you should consider adding it to your ready-to-wear collections. I'll be sharing with you how to sew this neatly to be giving the boutique standard vibe. And please, if you are new to this channel, please do not forget to leave a comment or a reaction as it helps my small channel grow. Thank you so much and let's get started. I will be using this fabric. It has two face. One thing you should take note of when getting a hoodie material is the thickness of the fabric you want to use. So I have two yards of hoodie material here and these two yards would be enough. So this is by 60 in length and on the by 60 part that is where I'm going to be using. So I'll keep one of the fold aside and I'm going to be using one side on the by 60 axis and I'm going to place it on fold on that by 60 part okay. So I'll place it on fold like this. So I'll go ahead to measure the length of my hoodie plus 3 inches. I'll mark it out and I'm going to go ahead to cut it out. Just measure the length of your hoodie and add 3 inches to it. That will do. Okay, so after I have cut this out, I'll go ahead to open it up by the corner to separate it up. I'll be cutting the back part before I'll cut out the front. So I'll go ahead to place this on fold like this. From the closed part, I'll measure my shoulder measurement divided by 2 and I'm going to mark it out. Next, I'm going to shift the shoulder by 2 inches. This is to ensure that the shoulder of the cardigan drops a bit. So on that 2 inches part, I'm going to be slanting the shoulder by 1.5 inches. Then I'm going to connect this to the neck part and I'll just connect this to the side like this and I'll cut it out. Next, I'm going to take the other cut out I divided. I'll place it on fold and this will be for the front part. And please, you should ensure that this is 1.5 five inches lower than the back that's why i said you should add three inches to your actual length so i'll go ahead to place the back on fold like this and i'm actually pinning this down because the fabric is not staying relaxed for the full length you make sure your actual full length do not reduce it so that when you add your waistband the extra inches from the waistband would help to give your hoodie that drapey effect on the down part of your hoodie my full length is 24 i'll make sure and mark it out then i'll go ahead to cut it out on the close part i'll make sure my bust measurement divided by four i'll mark it out and i'm going to be adding three inches to make it big so i'll make sure the total of what i have there make sure it added down i'll connect these two points straight up like this for your armhole depth you're going to start making your armhole depth from this your shifted shoulder measurement your armhole curve should not be too curvy like for normal dress just make it partial armhole curve like you see me do okay so i'm just going to adjust this a bit so that it will be up to my armhole circumference so you should check this it should be bigger than your actual armhole circumference by two inches so you should make sure and recheck and confirm then you can go ahead to cut it out I'll notch the folded shoulder. Next, we go to the neckline. From the close part, I'm going to be measuring 4.5 inches wide and 4.5 inches deep. You need the neck to be wide so that it can easily pass through the head. So you are going to pay attention to how I cut this neck. Remember, we have two parts here. This is for the front and this deep neckline is for the front only. So please pay attention to how I'm going to cut it. Now, from the folded side like this, I'm not cutting alongside with the back, please. From this folded side at the top, I will be cutting in between because I'm not expected to cut this deep neck for the back side as well because I have the back and the front here. So when I get to this point, you can see I'm just cutting just the back. Now I'm going to follow the curve and please, you are not cutting the back, okay? I'm just cutting only the front. It's the front neckline that is expected to be this deep, okay? So this is my cutout. You can see I cut out only the front, leaving the back out of it. So you should be careful on this part so you don't cut the back and the front neck depth equally. So I'll mark out where the back fold is touching the front part. I'll remove my pin and I'll be cutting close to the line and not exactly on the line. So that will be taken out when I join it up. So this will be for the front part. I'll keep the back and the front aside. So next, we're going to be making the cap or the hood. So I've gone ahead to make a cutout. For the cutout, I have two of these. One will be serving as lining. Now, the width of this is 25 inches, while the length of this is 18 inches. This measurement is not constant. To get the length of the cap, measure from the person's head from the back to this back neck bone. Then for the width, you measure from one eye all around the head at the back 
back to the other eye that's how you get the width of the cap for this measurement i use a length of 18 and a width of 25 will work for adults but just in case you are making for a small child you can apply the measurement technique i just explained so next i'll go ahead to place this on fold all right so from the top part i'll make sure 16 what i actually needed was 16 but i cut out 18 for any shortage or cutting mistake okay so i'll go ahead to make sure from that line 1.5 inches i'm sorry it's not showing but i'm going to use my curve rule and i'll connect this from that point like this now this is going to be the back point and this is the front now from this point you measure one inch up and you make a curve like this then you come to the side here you measure four inch inward and four inch downward and you connect these two points together with a curve like this you get the midpoint of this point and you mark it out and you go in by half of an inch and you connect this with a curve down to the tip like this to get your cap shape now you should confirm that this is up to the head circumference now just straighten this part up to make it equal like this so i'll just go ahead to cut this out i'll be following this curve at the down like this because this is how the curve should be so i'll go ahead to cut out the other part following the lines that i have marked and this will be for the cap i have four pieces of this two will be serving as lining so i've gone ahead to make a cut out for the sleeve now the width of this cut out should be equal to your round armhole circumference on the cardigan that's what i cut out and i have two here for two sleeve so i'm going to place this on fold now remember that i shifted my shoulder by two inch so i'm going to place my tape on that two inch and i'll start marking out my sleeve length so i'll go ahead to mark out my sleeve length i'm marking my actual sleeve length i'll go ahead to cut out the excess i have at that point next i'll go ahead to make sure four inches from the open part of the sleeve like this i'll connect it to the top with a slanted line like this and you just go ahead to blend this with a partial curve like so when i'm done i'll just make sure to confirm it is up to the round armhole circumference so i'll go to the down part i'll make sure my round sleeve measurement and i'll be adding either two inches or three inches depending on how big you want it so i'm going to connect this to the down with a slanted line like so and i'm going to go ahead to cut this out and this would be for the sleeve do not forget to notch the center now for the kangaroo pocket i've made a cut out it is 10 inches in length and for the width please use 14 inches i forgot to make sure it on camera so i'll place this on foot and from the open part um I will measure four inches downwards and i'm going to measure three inches inward and i'm going to connect this with a partial curve and i'll go ahead to cut this out and this will be for the kangaroo pocket and like i said i have two pieces of this so i've gone ahead to turn the sides of the kangaroo pocket with a bias tape i turned the side for the both of them we are going to be fixing the pocket first so first things first i'm going to notch the center of the kangaroo pocket and i will also notch the center of the front part all right i'll notch the center so i'm going to place the kangaroo pocket making sure that it sits on the center of it like this i'll go ahead to fold in the side of the kangaroo pocket like this and i'm going to pin it down to keep it down for me i'll also be folding Holding in the top part inward like this and as well I'll be pinning this down to hold it down as well and I'll also do the same thing for the other side of the kangaroo pocket and I'll also pin it down so because I'm making a two in one I'm going to flip this to the other side of the hood and I'm going to be placing the other pocket now my pin point will be serving as guide when I'm top stitching so I'll place this pocket on it following my pin point as guide I'm going to top stitch this straight okay as you are top stitching the first you're also top stitching the second one that way when you flip it you, you automatically top stitch the down part and the up part so i'll just run a second stitch line to serve as a design line kindly note that i have a different color thread on the real part so that my stitch line at the down part will tally with the color of my fabric so i'll be using the same method to sew the other sides of the pocket so i'll take the back part i'll place the front part on it and i'm going to be joining the shoulder and for the joining please you are going to be joining this with a 0.5 inch stitch so i've gone ahead to join the boot shoulder with a 0.5 inch stitch so next you are going to trim one seam of your stitch like this leaving the other one untrimmed so you are going to open up the shoulder point like this and you are going to fold in this part like this to cover up that stitch you fold it in like this and you are going to be top stitching at the tip of that fold all right so you are just going to gradually fold it in and you top stitch at the tip from one point to the other end of the shoulder 
like this all right so this will automatically cover the stitch and it will be looking on it and nice on the both side you can see how neat this is at the right side and on the other side so i'll go ahead to do the same thing for the second shoulder and i'm going to be using this same method to join the sides of the cardigan I went ahead to join the sleeves together and I'm using the same method I used on the shoulder to finish the sleeves as well. So I went ahead to join the sleeve to the armhole after finishing the sides. Now for the armhole, you're also going to be finishing the armhole the same way we finish the shoulder. All you have to do is to trim one part of the seam and you use the other one to cover the other side of the seam. Now because this is a curved part, you have to do this gradually so it can come out neat. For the cap, I've gone ahead to join the center part all around like this. So I'll go ahead to trim my seam allowance to be left with just a little bit for the boots part of the cap. Next, I'm going to place the cap right side facing the right side. I will pin this up and I'm going to start sewing from the end. Now, I have gone ahead to fix my eyelet. My eyelet is 1 inches from the center and 1.5 inches from the down. So I'm done joining the boot part together and my stitch did not affect my eyelet because it is 1 inches away from the center. I'll flip this to the right side and I'm going to be sewing a stitch of one inch away from the center and this will be serving as a casing for the hoodie rope. Next, I'll take the cardigan and I'm going to be placing this on fold and I'll be notching the center back and the center front of the cardigan. So next, I'll take the cap and I'm going to be placing the back center to the back center of the neck and I'm going to pin this up and I'll sew all around using a 0 0.75 stitch all around to the center like this all right so if it exceeds you can overlap it at the front so I'll go ahead to trim my stitch kindly note I'm trimming it leaving one stitch okay so you leave one stitch like this that you'll be using to cover up the other stitch like we did for the shoulder so here I am done covering the stitch at the neckline so I have gone ahead to fix the down band. You can see how this is like I gathered at this point. I fixed the down part. You can see the finishing at the waist. This is the inner part and this is the outer part. You can see that the both side is neatly finished in a way that you can wear either the right side or the other side. I'm going to be fixing the sleeve and I'll be showing you how you can do this because the fixing method of the sleeve is the same method I will use to fix the down part. I have gone ahead to fix the other sleeve as well. Now, I got this stuff in the market. It is actually a hoodie kind of something. You can get it in the market like this that you'll be using for the waistband and for the wristband. It is stretchy. It comes like this. It doesn't come in the yard. Okay, when I got this, it was 40 inches in length. It's not cut by yard, but if you can get a fabric that stretches very well and that is black, you can use the stretchy part as the width and use it for your wristband on your waistband. So I had to cut out this and I just cut out a width that is equal to my round sleeve measurement because like I said, it stretches very well. Okay, so I just cut exactly my round sleeve. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'll just go ahead to place it on fold like this and I'm going to close the side. So yeah, I've gone ahead to close the side. So after I have closed this now, I'll go ahead to like place it into two fold like this. So the next thing I'm going to do, you just ensure that the two sewn side is seated on the same spot. Then you place this on fold and you notch the center. You should use the same method to join the waistband. So you're also going to notch the center of the sleeve as well so that you would know exactly how to stretch it because the sleeve band and the waistband is actually smaller than the circumference of the main sweater sleeve for the waistband you should be using something that is equal to your hip measurement so next thing you are going to do you are going to adjust this like this making one to be longer than the other like this so i'm going to be pinning this up at the part where i notched it to keep this fold down like this so i make sure that one is longer than the other like this now you're going to take this side seam making sure it sits on the side seam of the sleeve as well and you are going to be placing the shorter one on it first so I'll go ahead to pin this. But before you do this, you should make sure that you have already gone ahead to like pass the sleeve through like this. So I'll go ahead to just pin the side to the side. So you pin the side and the center together so that when you apply stretch, you would know that the, the stretch is even all around. That's why you need to pin it up. So, so while I sew, I'll stretch. I'll make sure that I stretch this when I sew to make sure it fits all around. 
okay so i'll go ahead to remove my pin for so this is it you can see that i stretch it and everything went out equal I'm going to be trimming just this part leaving this longer part so you carefully trim this part that you left on soon you'll be using it to like cover this up and you'll be top stitching on it so i've gone ahead to sew it you can see and this is the inside but that's the same method i use in sewing the down part i showed it from the down before i flipped it to the up and top stitched it and the top stitching should be at the very tip like this and i have gone ahead to fix my rope you should get a hoodie rope so that you can spice this up to fix your rope and i place my eyelets on this point and this point of my hoodie so that then i can if i'm wearing this point i'll just go ahead to like move the thread to this side then if I'm wearing this other point, I'll be moving the thread to this side. Do you understand? That's why I have one eyelet here and another eyelet here. Okay. Thank you so much guys for watching. Please, so if you try this out, don't give me a tag. See you in my next video. Bye.